Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Sub-250 Nanofly 20. This is a 2S quad. But I have a confession before we got started. I used the HD0 goggles and I had turned off the record OSD element, which doesn't impact analog, which is what I've been flying here most recently. But when I switched over to running HD0, which this does have HD0, it has walk snail available as well as analog. When I switched over and I didn't set the record with, and I turned the OSD to yes on the recording side of the HD Zero goggles, I didn't have any OSD. So we're gonna watch that flight, but I'm gonna put at the end a sample of a flight with the OSD elements. So you can see the throttle values, you can see all the things you would see in the goggles, of course. But there's a reason why it's not a full flight, was because I went back out to fly this after reviewing all my footage over the last three or four days. And I went back out to fly it again, and then I crashed, which is not uncommon. And I crashed again, which isn't all that uncommon to have multiple crashes in one flight or one day. But unfortunately, as you can tell, this prop is a different color. I broke a prop, and I also the motor came off. So check your motor screws. Uh, it's my fault that this broke, I believe, because I think this motor had been getting wobbly, and I hadn't been uh, checking my motors after each flight. But the motor came off and one of the wires became detached. We'll take a closer look at it up down on the desk. But it, it can be repaired, but it's a very tedious repair. So I think it's probably time to go ahead and do the review. So my apologies for having that mistake of not having the record OSD on for most of my flights until I went back out this evening to do some more flights after noticing I wasn't recording OSD. But you'll still get to see a sample. As I mentioned, this is the HD0 version. So we have the nano camera as well as the HD0 Lite VTX, that second layer down here. The flight controller down in there, that is the Red Fox A2. It's a 12 amp all-in-one flight controller. Of course, it doesn't have a VTX on it, but it does have our receiver on there, which is Express LRS, and it does come with version 3.3, at least the one I have. The motors are the 1002, 14,000 kV, and on those motors are the HQ, 51 millimeter tri-bladed props. Looks like we got a 16 volt, 220 microfarad capacitor hanging out back. Of course, we've got a 3D printed canopy right up here. The motors are soldered onto that board. No connectors on this one. They did put motor wire tape over the motor wires and the arms. As you can see, they all route towards those sides. VTX antenna is secured back here. Oops, got some grass in there. There we go. The battery tray is also 3D printed, but unfortunately, I broke that back when I was uh, recording and not including the OSD. Oops. It's got a claw or clip-like design. It goes right in those spots. There is a screw that goes in there as well. But that doesn't matter much when it breaks here. So I think it would be best if we could get a second one or we could just print our own. I'll look around for the STL. It does come with a second set of spare props, as well as the shield, some screws, and the VTX flashing adapter. Here's the prop I broke. Pretty bad. Also comes with a hex tool and some different screws in there. You got canopy screws that in there that are the longer ones and motor screws that are small ones down here. We also get a Phillips screwdriver. Got a little bit of a quick start guide here. A guide to that Red Fox A2 flight controller. The only stickers we get are HD0 stickers, but I guess that's something. It weighs just a touch over 41 grams. In the main flight, without the OSD, you're going to see it on this GNB 550 milliamp 2S battery the red labeled one. And with the battery, it comes to just under 70 grams. The 550 green label, as well as the 530, also fit the battery tray, well, you know, when it's whole. Uh, the 550 tattoo does not. Carbon fiber is two millimeters thick. The arm is four and three quarter millimeter, or five millimeter, depending upon where you measure it. And motor post to motor post, I'm getting 88 and a half millimeters. As you can tell, if you look at those trees in the top right-hand corner through the pergola, we do have a touch of wind. Not bad, though, not bad at all. Of course, we've got the house and those trees protecting us when they're down low. Wind really only hits us when we're kind of out in the center of the yard and when we're up above the trees over the house. Uh, a little bit more weather data, 88 degrees, pretty nice. Uh, this is a lunchtime flight, home from work, skip eating and just go for a fly. The flying apparently feeds me enough I don't even need to eat. Actually, I've actually found that I like not eating lunch. I like not eating breakfast, it saves me time. So I tend to just have two meals now. Uh, one in the evening, it's a pretty good size, pretty hearty meal, and then I'll have kind of another snack meal sort of thing. It's usually food, not like chips or anything like that, uh, in the evening uh, before I go to bed, you, well, about two hours before I go to bed. Um, and not always. If I'm hungry, I have it. If I'm not hungry, I don't. Uh, so this won't be the best flight in the world, as you could already tell. I almost came down on those cattails over there. 
Uh, but I think this flight does illustrate uh, how this flag, this quad flies. Uh, something to pay attention to in the hard banking turns, you're going to see some, uh, I call it prop wash. You can lose, the sound sounds like jitters. Um, it sounds like almost one motor is slipping or something like that. So I think there's a little bit of tuning work that could be done to enhance this a little bit. Overall, it flies pretty smooth. I didn't have tracking issues with it. It was just that prop wash performance. You can see that uh, come out in the bottom of dives too. So when I come back down and I start to pull out, you can hear it. By the way, you can also see it, by the way. Sorry, I meant to mention that. It, it, it looks like a little bump in the road, almost like I hit something midair. Uh, but I am using a little bit of a different setup. I do have my camera out there recording for flight audio, but this time I went ahead and put the microphone uh, plugged into the HD Zero goggles and I am recording with an external microphone on the HD Zero goggles. Cleans up my uh, workflow a little bit and helps me maintain the flight audio without having to sync it up because it's already syncing as part of the DVR. So easy peasy for me. I need to remember to do that more often. That was a big feature of the goggles for me that I wanted to use more often. I'm not sure the audio quality is close enough to be discernible between my normal recordings, but that's something that uh, I kind of look for people to give me feedback on. You know, is it, is it good? Uh, did you even notice a difference before I said something? Uh, so this is a micro, and I think one of the things, we just flew that Lightning One from YMZ FPV. I was actually flying them both at the same time. And it came alive with 11 or 1003s, but the key, I think, is those props. I think the 1002 motors aren't enough motor in order to spin that Jim Fan 23, 2023 prop effectively. And I think that really brought this to life. These, these smaller bladed, small, lower pitched uh, HQ props, they, they just don't have the performance, even though you have the same KV motor. Uh, motor size is a little bit different in that we have uh, a, a shorter motor stator on this particular motor. So uh, this one I don't think is quite capable of more high performance sort of flight as you might see in other 2 inch 2S uh, propped quads, uh, mainly because that prop. I think you either drop to a 2 inch bi-blade or it needs to go to an 1002 motor and the Gem Fan 2023s. But it's still fully capable of doing the things I do in the backyard. And of course, this one, if you're not flying uh, HD, you have a little bit more weight you can take advantage of, or less weight technically you can take advantage of, because you're not towing the extra HD weight, which isn't all that much anymore. A couple of grams extra over the analog version. But if you don't like analog, what else are you going to do? You're going to purchase HD Zero Walk Snail, because that's the only other versions that this thing comes in. Uh, by the way, the flight time as we come into land is going to be four minutes. I know you can't see that because it's not recording the OSD, uh, but again, I will show you a flight at the end and I'll go ahead and narrate it a little bit uh, in the same scenario. But yeah, got the umbrella out trying to protect my face, but I'm not sitting anywhere underneath it. <laughs> okay, so the final flight was uh, in the evening after work rather than lunchtime when I showed you that flight. And I like to fly at lunchtime so the sun's kind of at the highest. I think that highlights the flaws the most. So when the sun starts to go down, it can highlight a flaw of a camera, but it doesn't necessarily give you the full sun or full impact of flying in and out of shadow. So I tend to try to use full sun flights. I don't always, but I try to. But I had a crash, oddly enough, that came in the grass, and that's when I broke that prop that I showed you in the quick specs. Here it is. I broke this prop on this crash, and uh, then the motor was off, came loose, what have you, and then I tore it. Let me see if I can zoom in to show you this. I might have to get a tool out too. Okay, so just to make it apparent, I got my little tool out. I didn't pull it out. I just uh, pulled it away. But yeah, I, I pulled the motor wire off of there. Uh, that is something that can be repaired. It is tedious. It is tiny little work. It's probably require my uh, magnifying headset in order to do it. I will attempt it and hopefully it will fly perfectly. That way, if I do happen to give it away, someone will be able to still enjoy it. So that was my fatal damage. But if you look here on the bottom, uh, you could tell I've got different size screw heads. That's their screw that's here, and those are my screws. And I did that intentionally when I replaced those to make sure I could highlight that uh, when it came to the review. So I lost two of the screws either in the crash or up to the crash. I don't think up to the crash. I think in the crash because when I crashed, it wasn't like a mid-air sort of flip-out sort of crash. It was, you know, I got tangled up in the tree and then I fell to the ground. That sort of crash. Something else as far as crash and uh, the durability of this quad. So I found that this screw 
does not get enough of a bite, or at least in my instance, it does not get enough of a bite. And that could be a print issue to where they just didn't infill enough. Uh, it could be something that they've already corrected. It could be something you see, but it is something to be aware of that uh, in this particular case, I noticed that it was pulling out. It could have been just somebody who built mine, turned the screw too many times, and then reamed out that hole. Or it could be that they printed the hole too big. All the others seem to be holding fine uh, through all my crashes. Um, and they're actually smaller uh, footprints as far as the print, uh, amount of material that those screws are going in. So it's a little bit bizarro that it just affected this one back here. And I noticed it because the screw was down here like this. So something to watch out for there. So when I tend to build these, I tend to put a nut on the top side of the frame. That way I've got screw head, nut, that shores up this bolt, make sure it doesn't woggle around. In this particular case, they didn't build it that way. They're relying a little bit on the uh, soft mounting and the fact that you've got four screws all around. It doesn't move a lot. It's just in my preference, if I were to build this, I would like to see a nut down there, a metal nut, that is. That is going to add a touch of weight, but nothing that I would get too fussed about. I do think having this small a screw head through a print holding our camera means you're going to have to be careful not to pull that through if you're screwing it too tight. I did notice in some crashes that my uh, camera angle did change a few times when I came down. You know, at one time especially, I noticed it was up high enough to where I was catching part of the canopy. Uh, and even at a high flying angle, higher than I've showed you already, uh, you will have the potential of getting some of that canopy into your image uh, just because, you know, we have wide angle cameras here in this HD Zero Nano camera and if you fly at an angle higher than say 30 degrees you're probably going to see at least a tinge of this red up in the top corners of your uh, goggles so one of the other things i was concerned about was well one again this is not secured down so if you have a battery ejection and this is tight and stays connected it's going to be pulling on those solder joints on your esc I would like to see this made available just standard so that the battery lead is zip tied to an arm you can do that yourself um, in this particular case, because the capacitor is back here, it gets a little bit more cumbersome, but I do think it's doable. Just pin it over here to this arm and then diagonally run your zip tie and zip it down. That way it holds on to uh, your battery lead at the arm with the zip tie rather than pulling directly on your ESC all-in-one flight controller down here. Uh, we do have little wires that go from the capacitor and it does look like those are flexible wires. They're not real hard and stiff wires. I've seen them both ways. I've seen them with flexible wires and I've seen them with very stiff wires. I think it was Emacs that used a real stiff wire uh, to connect their capacitor to their uh, flight controller. So something to be aware of. I, I get a bit concerned with this being out here attached over the top that it could become disconnected, but is it critical for the flight controller and clean electro, uh, power to the, uh, the Whoop Light VTX? I don't think so because I've built a number of these and I don't use capacitors. But I have not built any using this Red Fox 2A all-in-one flight controller. So maybe for clean elect electrical, uh, minimizing the electrical noise, maybe that capacitor is critical. So uh, something to think about both ways. As far as the frame goes, good strong frame. Let's look at the durability. It's something I hadn't looked at before, or not durability, the stiffness. Uh, this one is stiffer, as you would expect, than the uh, Lightning from YMZ, which I, for skinny arms, I was impressed. But this has got two arms on each corner, but good stiff carbon fiber. It's nice and smooth, as well as it's uh, chamfered all around the edges, so no sharp 90 degree corners. You're not gonna get any uh, uh, fibers in your fingers from running it along the edges nice and smooth um, I've mentioned it before the weave doesn't mean anything that can be any shape or direction uh, and obviously we have a press fit nut here that is to go through your mount but uh, obviously in my particular case that's no good because I've already broken this off but if you break this like I did you can fish a uh, a cheapo depot sort of uh, velcro strap through there which is what i did actually just put one through there i cut it about that depth between this little not the notch at the peak but at the lower valley of the notch and through the back i just made one about that thickness and put down some sticky pad you do need a touch of sticky pad because you can see the usb port does stick up a touch above the carbon fiber so you don't want your battery bonging into that uh, so you want to have a little bit of a thicker sticky pad and uh, then a battery strap if you happen to do the same thing I do. And this uh, is better, in my opinion, than when they made the 1S version of this. The 1S version of this, 
I thought was a mediocre performing cruiser. While this one isn't a high flying, high performance in this category, it flies pretty well outside of that little bit of prop wash that we get in turns. And I did notice when I used more throttle into those turns, I got less of that prop wash. So I think that can be tuned out. Hopefully they make a, a, a slight adjustment to the PID tune and everybody else is happy, happy, happy. But otherwise, I thought it performed very well. I think it's better for overall exploratory flight, more smooth sort of flight, just slightly less aggressive capable than others in the 2S, 2-inch uh, category that we've seen. And it comes with Walksnail or HD0, so it has that advantage over the YMZ FEV Lightning 1. Lightning 1 was analog only. Longtime veterans, what shape of frame is this? Does anyone remember that? I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but uh, yeah, that's a frame we've seen for years. I guess when it works, it's going to get used and reused. Okay, here is my evening time sample uh, with the OSD so you can see my throttle value, which is in the top left. Uh, you can see the, the VTX the temperature, that's actually the goggle temperature, the fan speed of the goggles, uh, as well as the signal. That might be something that interests you as well. And then we have our LQ or link quality of the Express LRS. Uh, in my little space, that's generally never an issue. Uh, this will not be a full flight. I only fly for, I think it's a minute and a half before I have a crash. And then in the next flight, which I have the crash that the motor comes off or tears off and I tear the motor wire, that one was like 57 seconds. So uh, yeah, we're kind of stuck using this short little flight, but I still think I get most of the things in that I typically do in a review flight, as well as you being able to see the natural OSD that you get uh, through uh, beta flight. Of course, if you're an HD0 user and you're wondering about being able to turn off the OSD to be able to get some more clean footage, I'm not sure that's a ver uh, that is available in the VRX stuff. I presume it is because I think most of the feature set, set of HD0 is not dependent upon the uh, hardware you're running, rather the firmware you're running. So I think it's available in the VRX or if you have um, the old SharkBite uh, box goggles that first started out for HD0. Uh, that is an element within there for record OSD, turn that off, and uh, you won't get any of the white le text letters that you see on the screen. We should be coming near the end of the flight, which will wrap up the review video. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.